Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. Mark here. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about UVs, textile density, and UDIMs. Um, I know it's something that people always tend to struggle with, especially beginners, is working with um, UVs. And it really is one of the most important parts of the texturing process. Even though it's technically a modeling process, it is the first thing that leads you into your texturing. And good UVs can really alter the way that your textures come out. Um, now, that said, they do have less impact now than they did in the past. Uh, we don't have to be quite so cautious with hiding seams and things like that because packages like Substance Painter and Mari allow us to seamlessly transition over things like that. Um, but there are still cases where, you know, seams will matter. Um, certain normal mapping techniques will you'll have issues with seams um, if you're doing hand painted projects where you're using a lot of photoshop your seams are very important so things like that it's important to keep in mind now i do mostly objects for game so a lot of the stuff that i do is single uv tile uh, but like i said later on in the video we will talk briefly on UDIMs and the the general idea behind them. But uh, most importantly, I want to talk about just the general layout idea of your UVs. I find it's important to cut your UVs in a way that it's going to best allow you to texture the object. So this is just a quick little layout that I did for the purposes of the video. Um, basic office chair, nothing too fancy about it. It's currently designed in a way that I'm just going to apply basic textures to it. It's not going to be a item that is really in the camera's view. So high textile density isn't super important, but I do want to be able to have the camera pick up details in the cloth so a certain amount of density is important to a degree um, but some of the smaller objects I don't really like you can see there's a super small UV here with this with this bolts um, getting very little space with on the grid but it's gonna have a very basic metallic texture to it it's not gonna have really any real detail put in to those bolts and if that was a concern, if, if there was going to be, you know, a shot for some reason like this, where we're going to be like right in on it, you know, maybe I do want extra density on that object. Like, well, maybe I'm, you know, trying to, sh if this is a product catalog thing, you want to show off the quality of the casters, um, you'll have different shots of the object. So the way that you lay out your UVs and how you utilize your materials is really dependent on what the camera is going to see. Again, because this is a game object that's not going to have a whole lot of close-ups on it, the UVs don't need to be perfect. But certain things I like to think about that I'm going to cover when I am laying out UVs is, one, the direction of textures. If there is one especially like with wood for example you want your wood grain to all run a particular direction and if you've got your islands all twist and turned willy-nilly you're gonna be constantly having to mask off different pieces just to get your wood grain all running the same whereas if like say these were all to be wood if you just have them simply oriented the proper way in your uv square that creates a lot less work for you in, in Substance Painter or Mari. So, for example, this edge here is the top edge on this, whereas this edge is the bottom edge here. They run in different directions. So, ideally, I would actually want to rotate this and then use orient shells to get it nice and square 
to face this direction so that if I put like a really heavy fabric texture on this that's going to be where the grain is going to be very noticeable it's all going to be running the same way on my object so I get nice clean texture seams that way everything flows will flow very nicely now this piece here the undercarriage of it is a completely different material from these three pieces so that really wasn't as big of a concern but it's still something that I wanted to think about and then we got these smaller pieces grab this here so even though the layout in in uh, Maya will do a very good job laying out your UVs for you and you can use it to help you speed up a few processes we open it up here you know different settings this is the these are the settings that I like to use um, in this particular case I've got stack similar turned on because for example this here is they're all going to have the exact same material on them. There's not going to be a whole lot of edge wear variation or anything like that. So having those islands stacked won't hurt my texture quality. If you're going to be doing something where you really want to show off, you know, say this is rusted or really scratched up and you want that variation, you would want to have these islands separated off so you could have that proper variation. So very important to know like I said, how your textures need to look before you finalize your decision making with your UVs. Sorry. So let's just grab all the shells here and we'll hit apply with the settings that are currently there. And you'll see it'll all lay out within that. Now it did have an issue for some reason with that there. Let's just hit the layout button again. Did not fix that. That's odd. Every once in a while, Maya will do this to you, where it will just simply not lay out objects properly. So this is just that object there. Very strange that it's giving those issues, but you know, every once in a while, you're going to just have to fix things. Now I generally suggest laying out your, <laughs> you can see when I redid this, it, uh, those screws did not get done properly, which might actually be causing part of the issue here. So let's just do a little fix here then. It's actually sometimes good to have these little mistakes. I get to do a little bit of extra work. I thought I had everything done before this video. Um, and then let's grab that, hit the layout button again, and see what it does for us. Okay, so that was the issue. Um, is that on top again? It is on top again. Strange. These are unfolded properly. Yep. Um, anyways, sometimes you're going to get weird issues, which is very important to notice that stuff. Um, it will tell you how many are overlapping, you know, how many shells you've got selected, things like that. There's, so there's a lot of important information down here. Now we, we do have overlapping because we want overlapping in this scene. I want to check out, yep, that's one of the bolts. Always good to check out what these little pieces are just to verify that they are accurate. Now this bolt is, that was, that must have been something from me, uh, moving uh, objects around and some of the changes I made to this 
leading into this video because that should not be there. Um, let's uh, so little errors on your scene will cause problems with your layout. So generally, if you're getting over overflow or overlapping UVs in when you hit the layout button, that generally means that there's something wrong somewhere in your uh, UV islands that Maya can't quite figure out what's wrong. And it just kind of like jumble, it's like it confuses its brain and it can't finish doing what it needs to do. So generally, if you're getting errors, it's because there's something wrong in your UV shell. So always keep that in mind when you're uh, going about this and you start having issues. So I've got some of this cut into pretty small spot spaces. Um, I didn't necessarily have to cut off these these pieces from each other. I I could have very easily just left that. Well, let's use move and sew to make that easier. I could have very easily left these together and gotten the very similar results. Or not. So you can see it did not properly sew everything. Uh, it does alter the look of your UV with something like this, um, which is, I, I really don't like that look. I, pref I would prefer to have, you know, this similar in shape to the way it is in scene have this separate now what you might want to do though because they are similar they are part of the same thing is go in and move those pieces close together so that when you are texturing you've got spots things similar together and that basically brings me to the next important thing even if you use the the auto layout feature um, just to get everything in shell maybe to get use the 3d ratios to get everything set the same size it's still a good idea to go through here and get objects together that share similar materials it just makes for much cleaner textures um, especially if you decide you want to do multiple UDIMs, things like that. They're, they're just things that are general good practice. I like to keep a lot of my small UV pieces all together as well. So they're just little things to, to think about. Now this here, so you can see these arms, we've got a slight curvature in the arms there, which can create a bit of distortion in your UVs. So important to check out to see what your grid, what your checker box looks like. Now those, those checkers are actually pretty clean through there, but say you wanted something just a, a little cleaner, you can always try and play with the straighten UVs tool. This can be a very tricky tool. You want to use this on UVs that are already fairly straight, unless you're gonna be willing to do a lot of kind of coaxing with it. But if we hit the straighten UVs on that, you see it gives, let's turn off the grid here. It altered that UV to just perfectly straighten each line, which will give you just a little bit better uh, checkerboards on your UVs. Um, let's hit that layout one more time. And it'll, once again, whoop. oh geez, all over the place here. So it'll once again set you up with the uh, 
I do that a lot. I'll go to hit the Alt key to move around, and I'll hit the space bar because I'm not really looking where my fingers are going. Um, and then, of course, it moved everything back again. So oh, when you're using the stacked UV shells, very important to do a marquee select when you're trying to grab islands. Otherwise, you're going to miss stuff. And yeah, so just get your objects moved around so that everything is nice and clean. I want you know these together because they're gonna be same material. These are also gonna be in that same area. You know, these are all the same material, so again, keep them all together. I am curious. This is the underside of that. This should be the underside of that. And this, these should both be. So why didn't, oh, because did I not do a, yeah, see, because I didn't do a straighten UV on this, it didn't stack those shells. But we can just grab that, stack shells, and we get that result anyways. And we can put these closer together. We got this bolt down there. But so let's get into, well, actually, let's talk about textile density for a second before we go to UDIMS. So textile density is one of the new tools that has thankfully, thankfully been added to the Maya UV set. So you can actually check what your density is so that you can match other objects to that density. So you hit get on one, you can hit set on the others and they will exactly match each other. So these should all be pretty similar already because I did use the uh, preserve 3D ratio option on my UVs. Um, that will act, that is setting your textile density. But if you want to make adjustments to this, just to get more detail from certain things, you can definitely do that. Like say I wanted, that was the bolt, right? Say I wanted this bolt to have some really good edge wear on it I could actually decide you know what I need that to be a 10 just to get that extra detail in there so that will increase the size of that object so that it gets that higher density from the from the texture now another important way to get better density from your textures is to create UDIMs. So UDIMs are basically what each one of these boxes are called. H square of UV space is a UDIM. Utilizing multiple UDIMs is very popular, especially in cinematics and film, to allow you to get better detail across your object. Uh, because as we talked about, the larger your U, your UV shell can be within its UDIM, the better density of the texture, the better quality of the texture within that shell. So a good example for this is because these objects here are all cloth, I could separate those off and then say I want, you know, these are plastic, the uh, casters here are all plastic. So I could grab those because they're going to be the same material. Um, and separate those off. And then all of these objects should be all metal. Yeah, so all these pieces are metal. Well, no, we've got some. Let's do this from a side view. So 
these objects. Are all plastic. These objects should all be metal. Yep, there we go. That's better. And so we can separate them off and create udem, a separate udem for each material. So if I grab my plastic, my metal pieces here, and because this is the idea of this is that we want to have higher textile density. I would want to turn off the stacking function because if you're doing something with higher texture, that means your camera's gonna be closer. You probably want to show off that any edge wear, any any surface details, things like that, want to be shown off better. And having stacked UVs means that those details are gonna be the exact same across all similar objects, which of course cuts away from from realism. So for something like this, stack similar not a good idea so you see laid out all those objects within our uv square there we've got four and a half density on pretty much everything it's they're all very very close to that and then from there i would also I, you know once again i would clean this up and you know, get things set in a way that I'm going to get, you know, much cleaner. Yeah, we can't quite get that right. Uh, that's too bad. Um, hmm. So this is some of the puzzle work that you get when you do UVs. So you can start moving this stuff around to get. Now this is less, honestly, less important because these are all going to have ideally the same material on it. So really reorganizing this like this is more just my own personal OCD than really any type of requirement. Yeah. It's, it's more important to have objects with similar materials moved around and close to each other than those that don't have. Yeah, so I'm just going to, I don't want this whole video to be me being neurotic. So I'm just going to go back and just let that auto layout. Um, but ideally, I would say take the time and just just clean that up a little bit. So then if we do the same thing with these, we hit layout again, using the settings that we had, you can see that it's, it's packed everything in there. Now, this is very poor use of UDEM space. So probably what I would do is grab all of these. So let's just set this here. I would grab these and move them off and grab all of these shells and do another layout because they are not using up the YouTube space very well at all. So now you've got, you know, actually utilizing the full UDEM space. Put these over here and then lay out this there. Grab everything, shift it over. And there you've got, you know, a, pro a properly laid out UDEM. Different materials all the same. So this would be UDEM 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004. Um, you lay out your UDEMs horizontally, starting with the first row and then working your way up. It goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then this is 10, 11, and so on. 
and it goes across. Knowing that numbering system is very important when you go into Substance Painter or Mari, so that when you choose the UDEM option, it, it knows where everything is. Um, if you just kind of willy-nilly put this stuff anywhere, like you, you don't toss one down here, one down here, they are not going to sh show up properly within that, uh, that space for you. Um, I can't, I think that covers the, the basics of a lot of this stuff. Um, you can definitely go into a lot more detail, uh, with, with these things and maybe I'll do an actual UDEM demo using substance painter on an object so that you can actually see exactly how substance painter utilizes painting with UDEMs. Um, but for now, I think this is a, a good basic overview of, you know, how to use UDEMs, how to lay things out. Now you can also auto lay out your UDEMs. Not something I suggest. I would suggest, you know, doing it the way that I showed you there. Grab each different, the islands for each different material, create, set them out. They'll UV to that tile, move them around, get them all out. But you can, for example, choose in your tiles in the layout settings. Say you want it to be four across, you change the U, which is the horizontal of UVs, to four. Leave the V at one. Uh, you don't increase this number unless you're going to actually go into the second, or sorry, you don't increase this number unless you're going to go into the second row. Uh, so four to one will lay us across four. And if you hit apply, it will just auto lay out the uh, objects. Now, one thing I definitely don't like about that is they're not going to be nice and clean. It's not going to have like materials together. Actually, let's redo that. Are we able to redo it? No. Um, let's grab a, let's, let's reset that again. It just kind of pushes everything everywhere. Doesn't utilize good space. Now, the higher and higher you push your texel density, it will alter this. Like, so say I want a texel density of 10 across everything. I can set that and then turn off ratios, hit apply. And it will attempt to lay these out within those four boxes, getting as much texel density as it can. Now, it won't be the 10, because across four boxes, there's just not enough space um, within this map size. Now, if I go to a larger map size, we get closer. So, you know, that's definitely something to think about. These are only all sixes. So they're not laid out very well at all. So if you want that extra size, so let's once again, with the bigger size, let's, let's put this to, yeah, let's put this to 6.5 set. And then let's lay this across six UDEMs. And so that will give um, Maya a lot more space to give the best possible density to these objects. But even still, you can see like it's not perfect. So I would 100% suggest going back and doing it the way that uh, I laid out here so that everything is set to each uh, different material. Now you can, for example, say we move this out of the way, we grab these objects and we do want that 
that extra space. Um, we could probably do one, two, three. Set this across three, apply, and get that. That's kind of funny that it didn't. Uh, Let's set this to 10. It won't fit. So let's set it to 8. That will fit. Um, 9. Set. Let's do our layout again. So this is funny. It's not preserving that, that UDEM size there. Um, what are we getting there? 9.3? 9.3. So for each UDEM square, it's giving us. So I guess because this can maximize, this also. So what would be smarter is to grab these, hit apply. Well, hit apply and get them into one square, probably with this. There you go. And then you could grab maybe these. And do they fit within one square nicely? They do. So yeah, playing around and getting the best results you can. Very important. Lots and lots of stuff that I could go into. I'm trying to make sure that I haven't forgotten anything because there's there is so much. Um, oh yes, there was something else. Okay, so you can see I've applied an ID color to each of these, mainly because I am curious. I'm going to test this on camera. If we set an ID color, I'm curious if the system will recognize and group items by ID color. It does not. That's too bad. That would have been absolutely fantastic if it did that. But, oh well. ID colors are obviously something very important in UVs. Um, makes texturing very, very simple when you set ID colors. Um, setting an ID map in Substance Painter helps improve your masking helps you find materials, especially when you get into sm fine small pieces. Like, you know, these these bolts, for example. If I set an ID map to those and just quickly mask to that ID map, I don't have to go hunting and finding the, the UV shell for that. Um, so setting, setting an ID mask to similar materials is also something that I would suggest doing and looking into. Um, ID masking is maybe probably something I could make an entire video on. It's the one thing about 3D is there's so many different little things. I could rant and just get lost going from subject to subject, bouncing around, confuse everybody. <laughs> um, so if if you're is that's why I stress in my other videos if there's one particular topic 
that you want to see like a really heavy breakdown in. Um, and the, you know, there's a video that maybe touched on it like this, but doesn't go into super good detail or doesn't really show off exactly how to utilize it properly. Let me know and I'll do just a more in-depth deep dive into those, those things. Um, but hopefully what I am covering, you know, gives people a, you know, a decent idea on some of this stuff. I think it's important to play with the tools and figure out for yourself, make mistakes and try to learn with the tools. Um, I want to try to guide you, but it's never good to be 100% spoon fed because then you, you aren't really learning if you can't discover on your own, but a, a, a good hand of guidance, I think is, is very important. Um, so once again, you know, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, any comments you want, if there's anything you want to see, please let me know. Um, hit like, and subscribe and, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you in the next video. Have a great day.